Hey, Pre-Calc Pros. Sorry I couldn't make it today. I'm receiving an award for my work last year, so it kind of took a little bit uh, out of me to make that happen. So, sorry I couldn't be there today. I'm celebrating that. Uh, what are we looking at? The Chapter P practice test. Previously, you were given a blank version of this. I'll go over examples that I have. Please keep in mind that your examples might look different. They might ask different things of you, but I'll show in here what your test could look like. So notice that calculators are fair game on the test, but no notes. You'll notice that you have to work backwards for some of the problems, so you really need to understand how the concepts work. The only way you'll really get this down is if you've done a lot of practice and you're really thinking critically about what's going on, which is what I want. So with this problem, the set's going to be giving to you you might be asked for either the intersection or the union of two unique sets that would create this. Ideally, you should know the difference between union and intersection. Uh, for this one in particular, I'm going to take intersection. So I know that if I have one set and I have the intersection of that set with the second set, this should be equal to C a, R, L. So those are the three elements in that final set. And so recall that with intersection, we're really looking for the same repetition. So truly, I don't know, the order doesn't matter. You could have R, A, C here. You could have uh, A, R, C here. Notice that at least A, R, and C are going to repeat over here, which is what you want. And then you could get creative with it too if you want. You could put in, oh, I don't know. You could put in B here. You could put D in here also. The main thing is that you want A, R, and C to be repeating. And that would conclude the intersection. For two, you're creating an expression using X and Y. That would give you 11. So I think a good way to work backwards from this is to recall that if you plug in for X and Y, your outcome needs to be 11. So you could start with that idea. And then you can kind of work around this. Like you have a lot of opportunity to amp this up and get to 11. So you could do something like two. You can then add on five. But let's say that we want to have that five be multiplying with y. So what, that gets you two minus that 5y, so I'll write it, the numbers down here. So 2, and then minus that 5, and then we eventually want to hype that up to get back to, what is it, 16. So 2, wait, 2 minus 5 gets you negative 3, and then you're trying to add on 14 more, okay? So you could do something to the effect of... Mm, if you're trying to add on 14 more, you could use something like x times 7. So you could do 2 times 7. And so what would this look like? You would have something to the effect of 7x plus x plus 5 times y equals 11. You could clear this up a little bit and do 8x plus 5y. 8x plus 5y would work in this case. Because if we plug in for x and for y, we get 11 as our outcome. That's important. These numbers may vary. Recall that we work from the inside out, so absolute value of 5 is just 5. We're then subtracting absolute value of negative 3, which is just 3. Taking the absolute value of all of that, Absolute value of positive 2, it's just 2. That's our answer. For these, the numbers can be whatever. But recall, we work from the inside out. So first distribute that 3. Getting 3x squared minus 3 plus 2 with brackets. Notice, I'm not even focusing on this beginning part. I think that's where I see students trip up. They're disregarding what's in here and just getting really caught up in the beginning portion. So we can definitely combine like terms here. We have 3x squared at the front. Negative 3 plus 2 gets you negative 1. 
Now you may want to rewrite the rest. Okay, so you're subtracting everything in here. So if we distribute that, the work looks like this. x squared plus 4 minus 3x squared plus 1. We can combine like terms here, so negative 2x squared plus 5. Main thing here is that the numbers up here could be negative, some of them could be positive. Just got to be open to anything happening. Negative 6 times 4, we know that's 24. Add your exponents here because we have parentheses around them. So this should be x to the 14th power, y to the 13th, and we're done. So notice these two problems are already given. You won't have to create these, I'll just hand them to you. And you'll have to know how to solve them. We see here we have a negative exponent, so there are a few different approaches you could take here to work around that. I think one easy option is to distribute to all three terms. So your work looks like this, 5 to the negative 2 power, x to the negative 16th, over y to the negative 2 power. And so if you have negative exponents up top, you would want to rewrite those in the bottom of the fraction. It's 5 squared, it's 25. x to the negative 16th is just x to the 16th, but now in the denominator. y to the negative 2 is just y squared. So that's one approach you could take. Just distribute away and rewrite what you can. For 7, you're being given a basic trinomial with the a coefficient of 1, so it could look like that. Being only given the c coefficient of 8, what are the possible numbers for b? So if you were setting up diamond method, 1 times 8 is just 8, b is some number where it's positive, so keep in mind, positive. So you also want to bring into the idea that the factors here could both be negative. So you have 1 and 8, 2 and 4. So you could just run through these options. So you could have 1 and then positive 1, adding 8. You could have negative 1, subtracting 8. Uh, you could also have positive 2 times positive 4, also negative 2 times negative 4. And if we combine all these, this would give us 9, this gives us negative 9, this gives us 6, this gives us negative 6. So these are our three potential options for B. All right, this is similar to the homework. Base is going to be given to you. We know we can take the area of the larger square and then deduct four versions of the smaller one. The area of the larger square in this case is 5y times 5y. These marks here show that the sides are congruent. So this is 5y being squared. We're deducting four versions of the smaller square, which is 4 times 4. So this can be rewritten to 25y squared minus 4 times 16, which is 64. And we're being asked to factor, so notice this is a difference of squares. So if we factor this, square root of 25 is 5. You want y along for the ride. Square root of 64 is 8. Make one positive, make one negative. That's our answer. The difference between subtracting 4 squared and the quantity negative 4 being squared, this is subtracting 16 pretty much, whereas this is being rewritten as negative 4 times negative 4. So notice two different ways. 16, this is negative. So as far as explaining the difference, there is one, because this answer is positive, this is negative. We could say that with this option here, 
we're squaring negative 4. I actually don't know if that's squaring. I don't even know if that's a word, so fact check me on that. So for here, we're squaring negative 4. And then over here, we're just subtracting 4 squared. So you could say that's the difference. Obviously the numbers, but recall you're being asked to explain. What else? You're finding the sum of some polynomial with x squared plus 1. We know that that involves adding. We know that we would be adding x squared plus 1 to get x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 10. So notice that here they don't have an x cubed term, so we want to make sure we're adding that in. We end up with a negative x squared term, so this is going to have to be dipping down two units, so we have to subtract two of them. We end up with an x, there's no x here, so we'll just add on x. And it's saying that if we add 1 in some number, it gets us negative 10, so the best number in this case is negative 11. So this would be our answer. We can always check our work on this. But as we can see, all of the terms that we can combine can be combined, and we're good with that. So this is our final answer. Uh, other options that you might be asked of here would be difference and also the product. So think about how those work. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, shoot me an email probably have time to talk about this on Monday, but remember that you're also being asked to create a version of this, so you should have an understanding of what you might be asked. Take care. Have a good weekend. Be safe.